Okay, so I tried to start. Uh, first of all, I need to say that actually I did not invent those practices. Uh, <laughs> those was invented by my beloved customers, especially by application developers, because I am DBA initially. Uh, and I tried to uh, go through them very briefly, uh, because actually I have uh, lots of them, and 100 or something like that. But I tried to select for you uh, about, I think, eight or seven uh, really best practices. Best yeah, really best worst practices. Uh, and uh, I do that quickly because actually, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, you need to explain a lot and it's really hard to uh, make people use the best practices. But for worst practices, uh, people usually adopt them themselves very quickly <laughs> and effectively. Uh, so, um, uh, worst practices. Uh, best practices are just boring, so uh, you need you don't need to follow them. Uh, you need to uh, implement worst practices, and they really allow you to make things very bad. Uh, so. Um, Postgres consultants, me myself, for example, uh, are quite nice guys, I think, uh, and uh, there are a lot of them here, and they'd be very happy if you will follow these uh, worst practices. So uh, thank you in advance. Uh, so uh, let me uh, mm, just warm up a bit. One of my uh, favorite for years uh, use as many count. Uh, in your code, especially if you have a uh, high concurrency environment, for example, heavy loaded internet site, put a lot of counts on your main page or uh, in some most uh, usable uh, part of your internet site. Because if you show to your um, end user some uh, magic figure, it is very important figure for you. And even here you load a page and see quite different figure and uh, spend uh, five or ten minutes to calculate uh, which uh, figure is, uh, uh, how it was changed. Yes, uh, he will be very thankful to you. So uh, select count is quite nice thing. Besides of that, select count uh, is quite a uh, not hungry for resources in PostgreSQL. So you literally do not need to r make full scan of the table to check the latest version to ma make the uh, count. And uh, Postgres will do that fast immediately. Just believe in this fact and all consultants will be quite happy for that. Uh, you just n uh, do not need to use approximate figures from uh, real tuples and from PG catalog. Uh, that's, uh, that's boring thing, do not follow that. Uh, the next one is uh, try to create as many indexes as you can. Uh, because it's boring to create indexes uh, after you created uh, your schema. Just cover one and every column with some index. Uh, uh, better thing you can do only just uh, you can use Django and uh, it will do it for you. Uh, but uh, actually, indexes are quite f uh, free of uh, any charge. Uh, they do not consume the space. They do not consume the uh, shared buffers. They do not uh, bother your uh, Dmail. They do not slow up your Postgres at all. Uh, and actually, if you create in advance some f some indexes, even for non-existent queries. Uh, <laughs> Optimizer will certainly will use them just for you. You, you need to just to ask and pray, and to <laughs> everything will be ha everything will happen. Just keep calm and use more indexes. Uh, it's not bad to use w slightly in our index. And to be safe, create multiple indexes on one column. Uh, you just uh, need to create four both. Four <laughs> yeah, for four fields and uh, multiple in that direction, multiple in yeah. that direction, and so on and so on. Yeah. As many as you can. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, that, that's a simple combinatorics. Uh, so. Um, uh, next favorite, maybe uh, one and every consultant in, in this room will agree with me that if uh, someone uh, change after vacuum uh, off, uh, it's the beautiful thing because uh, you actually uh, can help your customer very fast, very efficient, 
and uh, definitely it, uh, he will come to you because if he switches auto vacuum off, things will be really worse. Uh, so you need to switch it off because you do not afraid big data. Big data is a nice trendy thing now. So uh, if you have, for example, uh, one megabyte of data and it's spread and huge data files consuming one terabyte of data, you can call that big data and be trendy. <laughs> So, uh, do not afraid of bloat. Bloat is your friend uh, and friend of your consultants, actually. Uh, so, uh, turn off the vacuum off. This really helps. It's a good recipe. I can advise it every time. So, another nice thing is you need to replicate something. You need to uh, reinvent Sloney. Uh, Postgres is a quite stupid old technology. Uh, it has replication uh, since maybe 15 years or maybe a bit less or something like that. Uh, people spend uh, that time uh, just for fun. Uh, the <laughs> Uh, just don't bother, just create some triggers, put some data through DBLink, uh, use uh, ZeroMQ, use something like that. Just reinvent the Sloney. Uh, because, uh, like uh, Jan Wieck, I believe, said, uh, Sloney is so hard to use because it was so hard to uh, develop them. Uh, so just try to repeat that. Uh, one endeavor uh, replication model uh, implemented by developers I ever saw, uh, it just uh, picked up uh, several common mistakes from the Sloney. So you, do need to you definitely need to repeat that. Uh, five, uh, just move your joints or not joints or uh, even better distinct or even better something like that into your application. That's your beloved uh, Python, uh, Haskell, <laughs> or PHP, or Perl, or Java, or whatever. Uh, it's quite nice uh, language. Uh, it's low level comparative to SQL, and uh, the only one thing you will need after you fetch several tables to uh, your favorite uh, programming language is to invent join. <coughs> Not only one join, but hash join, med join, maybe some <laughs> another join, and uh, maybe you try to teach your application how to choose the proper join. <laughs> and basically, uh, you need to count uh, the size of the one table, count the size of another table, maybe sample from time to time your tables <laughs> from your favorite language. Uh, then you can hire Tom Wayne to uh, implement the PostgreSQL optimizer in uh, Haskell or something like that. It's quite cheap. It's, uh, uh, it's a reasonable price just to not to use the Postgres as it's designed to be. So just uh, move the logic uh, which a database uh, designed to uh, implement to your favorite application and implement it yourself. Uh, never use graphical monitoring. All those graphs, it's a quite stupid thing because you can always log into your database, grab some logs and say, okay, yesterday in two, uh, two o'clock uh, in the night, uh, that was uh, screwed up that and that. And uh, even better, you can not, uh, you just switch off any uh, SMS notices from your monitoring because it's always better than your boss called you and uh, said uh, our service is goes goes down. What happened? Uh, because with this is SMS from uh, text SMS from monitoring is uh, just boring thing. Just do not use that. Uh, it tells you to wake up uh, 15 minutes before your boss uh, will be on call and fix uh, things quietly. Nobody will know what's happening. Uh, it's boring. It's stupid. Uh, you you need to make uh, more fun from uh, operating PostgreSQL. So just do that. Uh, never use foreign case. Foreign case, it's a very stupid thing. Uh, it actually, uh, the only one thing which can, uh, uh, which has some uh, border to the fantasy of um, developers. You, you can reach fast everything if you do not use foreign keys. So uh, consistency in the application uh, works always. Uh, never happens that you uh, lose some data, you have some unconnected data uh, if you uh, will use uh, uh, foreign keys. So do not use them. Uh, that, makes, uh, that brings a lot of fun to your life.
uh, and uh, probably uh, the good idea is to bet uh, your uh, monthly income, for example, uh, to guarantee that uh, the application will be consistent if you do not use foreign case. Uh, nobody uh, likes to do that if uh, we're starting to talk about the monthly income. I'm, I'm curious why, I do not know, <laughs> maybe you know. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, eight is uh, all the time I uh, dealing with databases. I see that thing. Uh, I stop in 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, people try to use uh, very universal tables: ID, text, ID, blob, or something like that. Uh, uh, to make uh, things even more simple, ID can also be a text. Uh, so ID can be uh, now in uh, some strange encoding non-unicode and you can try to interpret it in uh, and decode it that always brings fun but if you try to for example to uh, store uh, uh, in the text uh, some IPs or my love timestamps uh, that always be fun so example he here is some example uh, so it is uh, 21st of uh, December and it easily can be converted from your business logic to something more peculiar than simply to 21st of December. So do it and uh, you always can find in your database some nice and funny artifacts. So uh, thank you if you have some questions or if you have some uh, another worst practice just send it to me and I will talk about this uh, on some another conference. <laughs> thank you. Okay.